Hey guys, this is Ashang David. Welcome to our channel Code as Arcade. In today's video, we are going to talk about OSI model. So you can see here, we are talking about OSI model here. And before starting this video, before starting this topic, I would like to request you to please like, share and subscribe to our channel Code as Arcade and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any future updates. So let us begin with the OSI model. Here, as you can see, I have written OSI model. Basically, the first thing that comes in mind when we talk about OSI model is what is OSI model. So here, the full form of OSI model is Open Systems Interconnection. So as you can see here, OSI model is Open System Interconnection. Now basically, what is this Open System Interconnection? So basically, OSI model is a tool used by IT professionals to model or trace the actual flow of data that is transferred in a network. So, the main thing that you need to keep in mind is before starting this OSI model that OSI model only works in network but if you are connected through cable then OSI model doesn't work. So, this is the main thing that OSI model works only in a network connection. So, you need to keep in mind about this. Now, if you talk about OSI model here you can see this is how an OSI model looks like. So basically OSI model consists of seven layers and those layers are application layer, presentation layer, transportation layer, session layer, network layer, data link layer and then the physical layer. Now in this case uh, sender and receiver is sitting onto the application layer. So basically it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a sender or it is a receiver both of them access the application layer. And why they access application layer, I'm going to tell you in some few minutes. These are the seven layers. It consists of seven layers. When a sender is sending the data, the data flow is from application layer to downwards, which is physical layer. And then if it's a receiver, then data has been received through physical layer to application layer like that. So in this case, when the receiver is there, so the day flow of data will be in this direction, which is from physical layer to application layer but in this case if the if there is a sender then the flow of data will be downwards that is application layer to physical layer now if we talk about this properly this is how an actual osi model looks like so this is the sender right here this is the sender and this is the osi model and here is the application layer the first one is the application layer again and the last one is the physical layer so the data which sends uh, the data that a sender sends goes through this OSI model and then it goes through internet and then it is received here to the receiver. So here is also an OSI model. So it is the same thing that is here. So here is the application layer and this is the physical layer. So actually OSI model is used to model or trace the actual flow of data right here. All right. So I hope you have understood this. Now we'll discuss about the different layers that are present in the OSI model. So each and every layer of, an, of the OSI model has its own unique features. So let us see them one by one. So I'm going to rub this and we are going to discuss all the layers one by one. So if we talk about the first one or the upper layer, which is application layer, then I'm going to write here, the first layer is the application layer. So can you guess what can this application layer does? Why sender or receiver are always there sitting on application layer? So the main thing is that application layer is the main uh, layer through which an, uh, which a sender or receiver can access the network. So basically it provides user and interface. Okay, so it provides user and interface. What does this means? This allows user to access the internet. So or access the network. So here in this case, sender or receiver sits on the application layer. Application layer provides them user and interface. User and interface in the sense they provide services such as SMTP, which is nothing but simple mail transfer protocol. This is the main protocol that is used when you send mail or receive mail. So this is the main thing, SMTP, then we have somewhat 
web surfing so whatever web you surf comes under this application layer so application layer allows web surfing then we have web chats so everyone's favorite web chats so generally whatever web chats we do is provided by application layer so these are all the interfaces that application layer provides then one more thing is that it allows us file transferring this is the most important thing not the most important thing but everyone does so file transfer then it also does the work of login and password page okay so here in this case application layer provides user and interface so in this case it allows a user or receiver to access the network in this case these are some of the examples that this application layer provides so smtp that is simple mail transfer protocol then web surfing then web chats then file transfer and login and id password that is done onto your first page so here in this case application layers uses are this much only and once all these things are done application layer transfers the data from application layer to the next layer which is presentation layer so here in this layer actually what is done i'll tell you let me rub this and here in this case we are going to provide we are going to discuss about presentation layer so in this case can you guess what does this presentation layer does once the data is received from application layer then this presentation layer what it does is it does the work of translation now what do you mean by translation whatever data is being received through application layer into the presentation layer now this presentation layer will transform that data into machine level language or suppose this is the data right this is the data that is received from application layer and this is the data that we understand or we humans understand right so it needs to be converted to machine level or machine understandable code that is why presentation layer is used so this presentation layer what it does is it changes or it converts the format from user readable code to machine readable code so the machine readable code somewhat looks like this this is a binary code so here in this case the data is converted to the user or the human readable code to machine readable code now how this is achieved presentation layer does the translation but how it is achieved actually it is achieved by two things now presentation layer is responsible for two main things which is the first one was the translation of course how it is achieved it is achieved through encoding so the first one is encoding and the second and the most important thing that this presentation layer does is is encryption now what is the difference between encoding and encryption can can you tell me can anyone think of this encoding and encryption and if you know this please uh, you can comment and uh, we'll see who knows better i'll tell you here how it is done so actually translation in the sense it converts the user readable code to machine level code right so in this code in this thing uh, translation is achieved by encoding so how this encoding is done so actually what is this encoding first let us discuss about it encoding is nothing but the transformation of data from one format to another format which uses a public scheme that can be reversed and anyone can access it so suppose this is the data encoding is done right so this is the conversion of the normal data through encoding now the problem with encoding is that it can be easily reversed that means anyone can access the information that is transformed or converted from one form to the other form like this so this is this translation is achieved by trans, by encoding okay so presentation layer does the translation work by encoding using encoding okay now after this this is not the secure way to encode the code 
that is why the second and the most important thing that presentation led does is it does the encryption now what does this encryption means encryption means we are converting the data into such a way that it is converted right but only a specific person can access it that means encoding is the way of translation but in this case encryption is also done so that the code or the data is secured so why this encryption is important encryption in presentation layer is very important because it allows the end to end reliable communication and it also reduces the security risk of data being transferred okay so here in this case presentation layer translates and translation is done through encoding and then encryption is done in this case now one more thing that presentation layer is presentation layer does is compression now what is this compression everyone knows what is compression compression is nothing but this presentation layer reduces the of uh, uh, the data packet size or it compresses the data and it allows the um, osi model to carry small small or less less data so when the data is compressed the the transportation of that compressed data is easy in that case presentation layer does the compression also so it is easier to carry the compressed data or the small data in comparison with this big data right so that is the difference so here presentation layer does the translation work does the encoding does the uh, encryption and then it does the compression of your data packet so it reduces the size and it reduces the amount of data to be transferred in the osi layer or the network so now in this case when uh, everything is done here data is transferred from presentation layer to transport layer so i'm going to rub this and again we are going to discuss about transport layer here in this case the next layer that we are going to discuss is transport layer so now what is the use of this transport layer in the osi model so the transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery so transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery in this case uh, a transport layer does the segmentation also now segmentation at sender side and reassembly at receiver side so what does this segmentation and reassembly means see this is your data right suppose this is your data that is being converted now uh what does does this transport layer does is it it is responsible for the process to process delivery then it does the segmentation and reassembly segmentation means it cuts the data into segments or any number of segments or depending upon the data packet it segments it does the segmentation of that data packet at the receiver side and with this we have small small data packets so here in this case this is one then this is one and this is one so now this is done at sender side right but then it is again reassembled at the receiver side so that receiver receives the whole data packet okay so in this case transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery then it does the segmentation at the sender side which cuts the data packets into different small small packet again it is easier to send a small packet than a big packet that is why segmentation is done and then that segmentation uh, after the segmentation met it is about to received by the re receiver 
it is going to reassemble at receiver's point. So that is why uh, whatever data is being transferred will be trans uh, will be cut into some parts and then it is going to reassemble at the receiver end. Now there are some more things that we need to discuss in the transport layer. So actually instead uh, uh, so not only the uh, process to process delivery it also allows the it is also responsible for the flow and error control. So what does this flow and error control means? Actually flow and error control means how many bits per second, how many bits per seconds your data is going to be transferred. That means this transport layer controls the speed of your data uh, of, at what speed your data is being transferred in this case. Now one more thing that uh, we need to remember is after the speed error checking is also controlled. So this error checking checking is done by reducing the speed and making sure that the packet is being delivered successfully. Now one more thing that uh, we want to discuss about uh, transport layer is that transport layer can be of two types. The first one is the connection oriented or the second one is connection less. So what does this connection oriented and connection less means? So transport layer does the process to process delivery, then it does the flow control, it does the error control, it does the segmentation and the reassembly and then it can be of two types which is connection oriented and connection less. So connection oriented means to transfer the data connection establishment is required. So if the transport layer is connection oriented that means network is required to transfer the data and if the transport layer is connectionless then only uh, then data can be transferred without any connection any prior connection to the network or internet. So this is very important two things that are, that are very important here in this case connection oriented and connectionless. So accordingly we have to work and transport layer can be of two types. So can we revise what does transport layer does? Transport layer does the process to process delivery. Then it does the segmentation. Then it does the reassembly. Then it can be connection oriented or connection less. And then it does the flow or the error control. Okay. Now, after all this, the data is transferred from transport layer to the next layer which is session layer. So in this case we will talk about session layer. Okay. So what is this why this what is that session layer responsible for? In this case session layer is responsible for managing sessions. So what do, what do you mean by managing session? Managing session means initiating or terminating session. So here in this case, it is responsible for managing session and it is responsible for initiating or terminating sessions. Okay. In this case, uh, session layer is re responsible for managing session and then it is responsible for initiating session or terminating session. Now what does this uh, initiating or terminating session means? Actually if we talk about, let's take an example here. So let us take an example here. Let's suppose you have opened www.gmail dot com here into your chrome browser let's say chrome browser okay so in this case when you open gmail.com into your chrome browser this session layer what it does is it creates a session it initiates a session between your gmail.com and chrome browser so that they uh, your gmail servers can contact communicate with your chrome browser to show your emails onto the chrome browser so this is a very important point uh, about this session layer it manages the session. 
so its main work is managing sessions so uh, when you so this is the example where you open uh, gmail.com and when the session is active your gmail servers can communicate with your chrome browser and show you your emails and whatever things that you are uh, doing after that once your gmail uh, once your uh, work is done on gmail your session will be terminated by this session layer so this is the only thing that session layer does after that the data is transferred from session layer to the network layer now this is the one of the most important layers in osi model because if we talk about this this is the fifth layer network layer so what does this network layer does it is responsible for delivery of individual data packets or individual data packets what do we mean by individual data packet actually whatever data packets you are receiving one by one your network layer is responsible for each and every data packet to be received from sender to receiver here in this case actually this network layer is responsible for source to destination transfer of all these data packets so here it is responsible for the individual data packets now what how it is done in network layer suppose this is your data packet let me draw this suppose this is your data packet this is your data packet just normal data packet here what this network layer does is it, it uh, since it is responsible for delivery from source to destination how it is done it and it adds the header to your data packet so a uh, header is been added to your data packet and what this header includes is it includes the logical address of user or or you can say user or sender or receiver so this header contains the logical address of the sender or receiver so now network layer what it does is it is responsible for delivery of individual data packets from source to destination and how it is done it adds a header to your data packet and it that header includes the logical address of your data packet uh, sorry uh, the sender or the receiver so this is uh, where now this is the layer where your uh, routers or modem works suppose this is the router so routers or modem whatever so in this case uh, on to this layer this network layer this router and modem works so uh, this is how this network layer delivers your data packet and by adding a header and it contains the logical address of the sender or receiver now after all this network layer what it does is it transfer the data again from network layer to the second last layer which is data link layer let me rub this now if we talk about the sixth layer which is data link layer can you guess what this data link layer does let me tell you actually this data link layer is responsible for routing actually this uh, data link layer is responsible for routing here in this case it is responsible for routing and choosing path from which path your data packet is going to transfer now there are so many paths that your data packet can be transferred so basically this data link layer what it does it it decides the path from which your data packet is going to be sent or received so in this case how it is done suppose this is your data okay now it again adds first it converts this data into now data is data with the header is coming from your session uh, uh, from your net, uh, network layer right so in this case already header is there now again what it does is it uh, converts this whole data into one frame okay so this data with the header is converted to one frame and again one header is added 
along with the trailer. Now you might be wondering what is this trailer and the header. So this is done by framing or the conversion. You can say framing or conversion. Okay. Now in this case, data with the header. This contain the logical address. Here it adds a header which contains the physical address of sender or receiver. Right. This header contains the physical address of sender and receiver. And this trailer is also added. Now, why this trailer is added? Let me tell you. Data link layer also is responsible for flow and error control. So, how this error control is done? Error control is done using this trailer. So, what is this trailer? So, this is the trailer which signifies the end of the data packet. It tells that this is the end of the data packet. And it also contains the error information or error report of this data packet. So this header contains the physical address of the sender or receiver and this trailer contains the end. Uh, actually this trailer signifies the end of the data packet and the error info of this data packet right here. This is how this error control is done in data link layer and flow control is also done by how many bits per second your data is flowing. So this is all the work that your data link layer does here in this case. So actually this trailer. So actually this trailer what it does is it checks for any error and how this is checked actually uh, it signifies the end of the data packet right but it also checks for CRC. What is this CRC? CRC is cyclic redundant check. So here in this case, it checks for CRC. Cyclic redundant check is somewhat, it checks for if that data packet is come again or again or not. So it checks if the same data packet is coming or not. So it ends at the data packet. It check it contains the error info and it checks for cyclic redundant check, which is CRC. So this confirms that again the duplicated uh, that uh, duplicate data packet is not coming again and again. So this is what this data layer link layer is responsible for. So now once all these things are done, then again uh, the data is transferred to the last layer, which is physical layer. So let's talk about the last layer, which is physical layer. Can you tell me, can you guess what this physical layer does? This is the physical layer. So actually this physical layer is used to deal with the physical connector to the network. Now what does this physical connector to the network means? Its main responsibility is that it should establish the physical connection between two devices. So its main responsibility of this physical layer is to, to uh, manage the physical connection between the devices or which access the in network. So it deals with the physical connector that connects two devices to a network. Now there are so many things that physical layer does is it provides a transmission medium. It provides a transmission medium for your data to be transferred so that your data can be easily transferred from sender to receiver. Now it has so many uses. So it actually is responsible for now since it provides the data transmission media, then what happens is it is responsible again for bits or data transmission over a medium over a transmission medium okay so this is what physical layer is responsible for now there are some more things that uh, physical layer does is what it does is it it actually it actually determines the type of encoding that needs to be done. Why this type of encoding physical layer is doing? 
वॉट एवर डेटा वी रिसीव फ्रॉम एप्लीकेशन लेयर दैट गॉट कन्वर्टेड इन द प्रेजेंटेशन लेयर टू मशीन लेवल लैंग्वेज राइट सो इन दिस केस अगेन दैट मशीन लेवल लैंग्वेज कोड हैव टू बी कन्वर्टेड बैक टू ह्यूमन रीडेबल कोड दैट इज वाई इट चेक्स फॉर द टाइप ऑफ इनकोडिंग दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड सो फिजिकल लेयर वॉट इट डज इज इट चेक्स फॉर द टाइप ऑफ इनकोडिंग दैट हैज टू बी डन एंड देन your data is encoded back to the human readable code and then your data can be easily read by the receiver now the say, the one more thing that uh, this physical layer is responsible for is synchronization of data or bits so there are so many things that physical layer is doing actually it is responsible for the physical connection between the two devices to access the network then it provides the transmission medium then it transform just because it provides the transmission medium that is why it is respons its responsibility is to trans, uh, trans the bits or the data transmission to uh, the receiver and then it determines which type of encoding has to be done and then Uh, uh, this synchronization of data uh, data or bits is done through physical layer it it uh, maintains that uh, there should be synchronization between the sender and the user so that data bits can be received evenly now after all this data is transferred to the receiver from the physical layer so now this is how your data is transferred from application layer to presentation layer then presentation layer to the transport layer then session layer then network layer then data link layer and finally physical layer then again it goes through all those steps and it is it is received by the receiver which is sitting on application layer so through application layer only this uh, receiver gets the data again so i have already told you that sender or receiver already sits on to the application layer that is why this thing is done so this is how this osi model works i hope you have understood it very well and if you have any doubts regarding this topic please let me know in the comment section and i'll clear the doubts in your comment section and this is it for today guys thank you for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel code is akin and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any notifications or future updates So thanks for watching this is Ashang David signing off and you're watching Kodazaki happy learning